good friend of mine, Melissa Holcraft. <laughs> is an experimental class and I'm going to talk about our project for the year. Yeah. Uh, no, you're fine. Oh, there we go. All right, that's fine. So what is the Policy Lab? Um, it is an experimental, entrepreneurial, enthusiastic class that is unlike anything else that is offered at the law school currently. Um, this is the first year we've been doing this course, it's a year-long class, and there are only six students. Um, we had a professor at the law school, Professor Gowder, who decided that traditional law school classes were not giving us the skills or the opportunities to really show what we can do as law students and members of our community. And so he basically put a mission on us in this class to um, develop a law policy student project which is going to become public and will represent a genuine contribution to the policy conversation around a specific area relating to technology and access to justice. That is literally all we got on our first day. And he said, go with it. And so we spent most of last fall figuring out what kind of project we wanted to do, what kind of access to justice problem we wanted to focus on, and what we as um, five students, and now we're at six, we brought another student on at semester, uh, what we could really accomplish in a year. And luckily, we have figured out what we want to do, and we are really excited about um, what's going to happen. So after interviewing probably 10 to 15 legal and nonprofit professionals um, over the past semester, we decided to focus on 501c3 nonprofits, excluding hospitals and institutions of higher education, because those are a whole nother beast that we, they have a lot more legal issues than what we could probably provide in a year-long project. So we decided to choose nonprofits, and um, it was a long process, but after speaking to people at the Iowa Nonprofit Resource Center, which um, started out of the law school and was founded by Sandy Boyd, who many of you may know or heard of. There was actually a nice article about him and his wife in the paper last weekend about their Valentine's Day plans. But he is who the law school is named after, and he taught, and he teaches the nonprofit and philanthropic organizations course through the law school. And that class kind of tipped us off to the fact that maybe we should be doing something for nonprofits. So why we ended up choosing nonprofits. Um, the decision to go the nonprofit route was actually really personal with me because I have volunteered for the same nonprofit launch for the past eight years. And I selfishly wanted to create something through the law school that would help my nonprofit and other nonprofits like it. Um, unfortunately, there are plenty of nonprofits around. There are hundreds just in Iowa that start every single year, and the same is true for most states across the country. The problem is most nonprofits start with just their mission in mind, and they're really focused on providing resources to their communities, which is awesome, but there are a lot of legal issues that go along with um, the creation of a nonprofit and the sustainability of a nonprofit that most nonprofit organizers don't have knowledge of or experience dealing with. Launch, for example, is a nonprofit that I volunteered with as a, as a volunteer writing curriculum and volunteering with students for the past eight years. I recently became a legal intern for them because even though we've been in operation for over 40 years, we've never really had legal services. There are things like disclosure forms, conflict of interest policies that nobody's ever really thought about and nobody thought, maybe we should have a lawyer look at this. And I know that Launch is a pretty sophisticated organization with its own foundation and multiple boards of directors, but we still haven't realized these things until I came on in January. And that concerned me, and I realized that we could definitely do something about it within the law school. And so after talking with Richard Kuntz, who helps run the Iowa Nonprofit Resource Center, um, and speaks to nonprofits every single day about their issues and their compliance problems, we realized that we could do something. And so we identified some of the things that we could add to the nonprofit law conversation. So we have professional resources at the law school that a lot of people are not able to access. Um, things like legal research, the ability to ask people within the law school to help us build a website, or the ability to reach out to local area lawyers and 
the State Bar Association and have them respond pretty quickly and be interested in what we're doing. Um, we realized that one of the biggest problems with providing legal services to nonprofits is the lack of uniformity in the provision of those legal services. So there are not a ton of resources. Um, they're not really highly publicized because people don't really think about the fact that nonprofits have compliance issues and the fact that you have to do annual reports. And if you don't do annual reports, the Secretary of State can dissolve your nonprofit. So these are really scary things because people are really helped by nonprofits and they help probably the biggest group of people in the country. And it's kind of a difficult legal landscape to navigate because each state has a different approach to how they treat their nonprofits. So we thought we should do something about it. So what are we doing? A lot. Um, we decided to take a two-pronged approach to helping nonprofits. And our first one, which is probably gonna take up the bulk of our the rest of our year, is creating a web-based application. And then the second prong is focusing on state level policy proposals because it is, after all, a policy lab. And we thought that providing a resource and then also providing the underlying governmental infrastructure would help out the best. So our web-based application is going to provide nonprofit compliance information generally. We decided at the outset to focus on nonprofits who are just starting because that's when most of the problems arise legally. Um, and there, aren't a t there are no current resources that aggregate all of nonprofit compliance information in a platform that is free, which is a big thing. Um, the number one nonprofit resource site is GuideStar, but it is pretty expensive to um, access their information, and they don't have it in a great state-by-state -state format that's free. And we also wanted to provide a better way to connect lawyers who want to do pro bono work for nonprofits and nonprofits, because Nonprofits really aren't focusing on finding a lawyer and figuring out all of their legal issues. And I actually, in my own experience working with Launch, we had this issue come up and I said, you guys need to talk to a lawyer. I, as a law student, can't do that for you, but you need to find a lawyer. And they had no idea how to even go about finding a lawyer because there isn't a lot of just nonprofit law only lawyers, but it is a specific area of law that you need somebody who's experienced. So we decided that we could work with our own internal resources with all of the area lawyers and the state lawyers to figure out a way to not necessarily create a social network, but a network for lawyers to advertise their pro bono services for nonprofits in a free manner. Um, so what we want to make sure that we can do is provide compliance forms. We can link to state and federal agencies, provide practice information, link to social media of nonprofit attorneys, register nonprofits searching for legal assistance and kind of make those connections and ensure that we can connect lawyers with the proper nonprofits that they can work with. Um, obviously some things that come up are legal ethics issues with providing legal advice via the internet, so we will <coughs> not violate any of those rules. And then our second um, prong attack for helping out nonprofits legally is a state level policy proposal which I'm really excited about but is not as interesting or flashy but we because we want to utilize the web-based application to connect lawyers and nonprofits the easiest way to get a lot of lawyers is to work with the State Bar Association and hopefully propose some sort of policy that promotes um, lawyers being part of this website and possibly gives them extra continuing legal education hours or small things like that that can provide this infrastructure to really bulk up the legal resources we can provide to these nonprofits. So that's a pretty quick overview of what we are doing. Um, there's a lot of work to be done and we still have most of a semester left. So we welcome your questions. It's obviously in the early stages still.